Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is games for change and the effect of domain. And, and really the reason why I'm talking about this is as I was watching the live stream for games for change, and I did get to, to watch some of the portions and I was very happy to do that. Um, especially what the game that Chris did called, ne called you know, Never Alone. They had two people up there, one an experienced player and one person who was an experienced gamer but just playing the game for the first time. They were up there and they were describing, well, this experience, I'm not sure how you say it, and I'm, but it kind of affects you. And, and then I'm like, oh, well, it, it's the effective domain. <laughs> and and that it wasn't something else. That, and the thing about it is, well, the Twine... Um, well, the Twine session definitely had educators in there. The other set, the other se session, especially the the playing session, the let's basically the let's play session, didn't have educators there. So it was a very different dialogue. So I guess what I'm answering to is if you go back and you watch <laughs> what was shown at Games for Change, I really, I really think that that maybe if you have this framework, this might help. But everything that I tell you. At the end of this all, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't listen to it at all. So if you if you'll go to the next slide, and and it'll make sense when I get to there. Um, but basically, and this is from the 1950s. And sorry, I'm an educator. I go back. I look at educational theory. I I, I can't help myself. So this is my frame. So there's three domains of learning, and there's cognitive, there's affective, and the <laughs> the psychomotor. Now cognitive, we hear all the time. We as educators, oh my god, every time we do curriculum, every time we're doing learning objectives, every time we need something, and for me, it's at the community college, every time that the state community college will approve something, it only gets approved if you take those verbs from Bloom's taxonomy and you pull them out of that cognitive, <laughs> the cognitive, and you use those verbs, and then you can go ahead and do that. Now, rarely, very rarely is the effective domain disgust, and then the psychomotor, which a lot of gamers will know that this is where you build up your skills, and this is your die and do over, that, that part doesn't even get discussed. Okay? <laughs> so, go ahead and go to the next slide. So, the whole thing for Games for Change, I just kept going, you know, effective domain. It's everything there. And this is from David Craftwall, and while we say Bloom's taxonomy, I mean, the thing of it is, Bloom wasn't the only one who's writing all these things. So this was the guy. While Bloom focused more on the cognitive, this is the guy. This is the guy who, who focused more on the effective. And you can see there. And I know there's a lot of words, but you know, here is what the effective domain: it's behavior, it's attitudes of awareness, interest, intention, concern, responsibility, your ability to listen, and respond in interactions with others. So, you know, every time that you hear about digital citizenship, guess what? <laughs> it's coming from there. Okay? It's coming <laughs> it's coming from it, it's coming from there. And these are all the things that we're saying that we we want our students to do. Okay? And 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 to give you an example of this, I'm going to I'm going to screen share something I have, and this is on the Games for Change site. And um, the Games for Change you know, they're in their 11th year now. They've been doing this for 11 years. So this is one of the older ones. But I think everybody I know who does game-based learning, and, and when I say game-based learning, it's not like they picked it up last year or the year before, and they still get gamification and game-based learning confused. But everybody I know who's been doing it for a while has taken this, uh, has taken this game into their class one way or another. And it's called Doffer is Dying. I know Chris has. I know Sherry has. I, I have other friends um, who have. I've worked with Sherry Emerson, who's done it in her anthropology class. And if you just look at this, and I'm just going to just pick some points. Web-based viral video designed to raise awareness of the genocide taking place in Doffer. So raising awareness. Empowering college students to help stop the crisis. Okay, the content and the creative are woven together. It helps make activism in intuitive. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but look, here's the thing. They, at the end of this, it gives action items in the game. So, 
that users can send an automated note to President Bush, it was when we had President Bush, to support the people of Doffler, or petition Congress to pass legislation that aids Doffler's refugees, and by doing so, increases the overall health of the camp. Okay? This is the difference. This is a, isn't, this isn't your students looking at articles about Duffer, evaluating them for credibility, synthesizing these, and then writing them in an essay. This is straight going, this is straight going back to interest, attention, concern, responsibility, and taking action. And this is what Games for Change is about. It's this kind of social impact. And if you can go to the next slide, that would be great. Okay, and so so when it comes to the effective domain, uh, it, it has levels, just like Blooms does. And if anybody knows the first level in Blooms, <laughs> and I have to say, anybody who's written curricula or learning objective starts knowing these by heart. But but this is the other one. Yes, Leanne answered knowledge, remembering. Can you can you can you give me facts back? Okay, it's different here. Over here on the effective side, it's receiving. So it's attention to new. It's attention to new information. Okay. Then the next one is responding. This is actively participating or interacting with the the new information. So you're discussing, you're presenting, you're reading, you're selecting, you're telling things like that. The next one is valuing. So this is seeing the work. So this is, um, excuse me, justifying or differentiating or selecting or sharing. Then the next one is organization. Fitting in the new information into a, a, a existing schema and deciding how the new information makes sense for you. Okay? And then the last one is characterization. This is taking the new information in, exhibiting new behavior, and attitudes or beliefs. So this is what the effective domain is. And this is a lot. I think when, when they were talking about Twine and Twine being accessible and bringing, that Twine allowed people to, to write and express themselves. And while a Twine is open, and, while Twine is open and with a, a little bit of help, most people can adjust and start doing a game development with it. That's that's what I think they, they mean about accessible. But but we can talk about that if we want to more. But what it is is having games that can go ahead and affect. And, and Sherry just asked, are we suggesting that we use her bloom? I yeah, why well, why well, quite honestly I am suggesting yes. <laughs> And, and what I'm saying is, take Bloom, take you know, <laughs> take Strathwell, and, and also take the psychomotor. I mean, and the thing of it is, die and do over. You know, that try and try again, and and go back and look at it and see if it works and what pattern. That's from the psychomotor domain. You know, where you don't see that in Blooms. You see synthesizing in Blooms. You see, oh, let's evaluate this in Blooms. You don't say, let's try this and let's try this one again. And let's, you don't see it. So, so yeah, I, I think we should usurp. Okay, so now I've told you about the effective domain. And when I was listening to everything here, I just, I just kept thinking, oh, Okay, there is a place to put it. There is a way to talk about it. You know, I can write learning objectives with this. Yeah, Sherry just wrote in the chat. It's like the freaking matrix. Yeah, it is. <laughs> in so many different ways. Double entendre there, Sherry. But um, the thing of it is, you know, my thoughts are new. I have no new thoughts. Okay. But anyway, at Games for Change last year, a bunch, a bunch of the intellectuals, and and I say that with you know all respect, started to go. Wait a second, this social impact. We're not all talking about it the same way, and we're not using the same vocabulary, and we're not talking to each other, and it's getting splintered and it's getting fragmented. So what they did over the last year is they came up with this report. It's called Impact with Games, a fragmented, 
a fragmented field. Okay, and um, the thing of it is, this report, and it's not a big read, so you can go in and look at it, it just comes out with five things for impact, so it's really easy to go in, and <laughs> and um, you can go in there and take a look at it, and there's no problem with that. Um, the thing of it is, what they came out with, and I'm quoting this, is recognizing the growing breadth of games and seeking new coherence in describing their impact. That these games for change, that if we're going to discuss how they're making an impact, and, and I would say past the effective domain, even to the psychomotor, and, and just because I've had lots of discussions with Marie, I know how with the big MMOs that she, that she talks about how her son is learning how to negotiate in these. And, and you know, Games for Change wasn't even talking about that. Wasn't even talking about the big collaborative stuff that comes out of it. So I, I still see area for there, but the breadth of games and seeking new coherence in describing their impact. And I think a lot of us that play MMOs could look at describing their impact where it doesn't fit into anything in this fragmentation report, nor anything in either ignore in anything in either domains. Now, they're also suggesting um, a more, it should only be one inclusive, but obviously that made such an impact for me. I typed inclusive twice. Um, inclusive typology of how games affect social issues. Now, when you're playing a game, how does it, you know, how does this playing of a game affect a certain social issue? Like Doffer is dying, they suggested that you write a letter to con Congress. I will tell you that when our students at our community college played that game, they didn't necessarily write to Congress, um, but they started thinking about what's it like in a refugee camp. Because Doffer is dying, you can't win in that game. There's another Games for Change out there called ICE, um, which is a lot like Papers, Please, that came out this year. I think Papers, Please came out this year or last year, where you can't win the game. And what you're, and really, to me, those games are trying to teach you the futility of it all. Because I know when Chris taught it for his students, his students kept going, why can't I win this game? Why can't I fight back? Why don't, and I mean, that led to a lot of discussions and a lot of feelings, I would say, of, of taking it out of, of just a game and going, you can't do that because this is based off something real and in that real life, you know, the 12 year old kid, the 8 year old kid that's playing, that you're playing as a character can't fight back. So, the other thing is, as far as impact, this um, fragmentation report is really looking at what's the definition of impact, to have an effect, an influence, to make a certain, make a difference on an individual or community level or even affect society. Okay, now when it comes to us in school, you know, we are stuck on those, on those assessment scores. We're not looking at this at mu so much. We're not looking at how it can help with wicked problems, you know, and, you know, and, and if I was to quote Barbara, you know, Barbara Truman, it would be like, what's chaotic out there, what you can do about that. Okay, so this is what this fragmentation report is looking at. So this fragmentation report has this call for ideas, and the draft is open for comments. I made a Google, Google Doc. Anybody from the Metagames or ISTE who wants to put comments in there will submit it as the Games and Sim Network, or you can go and you can just submit it, or you can just go and you can just submit this one yourself. That's that's perfectly fine, also. So. I guess with for the effective domain, what I wanted to say is when you're looking at games, it might not just be about what you're used to assessing the students on. I mean, a student playing a game besides, <laughs> you know, besides going ahead and 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 you know just playing it till its end, you know, what impact does it have on the student? outside of whatever kind of normal testing ha is happening and I, I don't even I don't even know if I want to get into the psycho into the psycho motor portion of it but there 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 is a lot that games 
can teach us. And so we're going to be wrapping this up. And if you'll continue on. So basically, um, these are the claims that the study made. I'm not going to talk about them much, but I'm just throwing them out there for you. Impact is too narrowly defined. You know, that some of the games when they're assessing things, they aren't going, you know, they aren't going, even if it's digital citizenship, they're not going past, can the student state the rules? Um, key terms are politicized, and Sherry was bringing this up, and Marie was bringing this up. You know, what is a game? And John was bringing it up too. Oh, you know, some people might think, you know, Home Again is not a game because it doesn't fit this. <laughs> And, and the other thing is assessment, and, and I will tell you, there's a couple of us on this panel who love assessment, but assessment is a dirty word for a lot of people. Uh, there are some people, game designers included, if you say assessment to them, they are not happy about it. So these are two words that, that are still out there, and there's others that, that people are just, you know, are just getting polarized if they're, if they're mentioned. Um, evaluation methods are inflexible and this goes back to you know kind of a, creating an assessment just for that game or the game around an assessment rather rather than any of the other features and then um, applicant applicants um, and this is they're talking about grants and these are academics so applicants are confused by calls for funding and awards that 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 seriously some of the RFPs getting out there are going, we want a game for change, we want a game for impact, and then if you read what they want, it's totally different than, than what other people have a view of. And then last but not least, typologies are deep but not connected. Like um, how we did what is a good game, that was really based on, based, I'm sorry, based on us um, because we're educators. So it was really coming out of Katie Salins and Eric Zimmerman's discussions of what, you know, what is a good game plus Jim G. And then, you know, if you look at another field, they're coming out with their own typology about it and their own research and their own decisions. And, and their point was that there were silos that were deep but, but not, you know, not connecting. And the report, if you take a look at it, I believe they, and right here, but anyway, <laughs> I believe they, they interviewed, they did 45 interviews, they did grounded theories, so, they, so grounded theories, you know, they keep asking questions until a topic gets saturated, and then, and then they go and code it and pull out the key points. So that's what they did for this. So I think this report, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the word accessible. I think this report is very accessible for people. That you look at the five impacts, think about it, and if you've been doing game-based learning for a while, you're going to have some opinions. Now, like I said, you can put it on the Google Doc, where I have the website listed there also, and you can just go there and you can put anonymous com comments. 